प्रशांत एम आई ऑडिबल यस यस श्वेता uh a very good evening everyone uh, a very warm welcome to all of you in today's sunday special session on home nutrition garden a step towards uh, biodiversity and health by our guest dr prena agarwal the founder of ecosphere connect that provides nature based solutions for improving ecosystem health she is msc in biodiversity and an ecological consultant she will share some beautiful ideas of home nutrition garden few easy to grow herbal plants biodiversity gardens and health link i request all the participants to be on mute and ask the questions in the chat box after some times ma'am the session is all yours and you can share your screen now thank you shweta thank you shilpa and it's a pleasure to be here on this platform interacting with all of you all and just the fact that everyone is here the second session today on a sunday means that you all of you all are interested in gardening and i hope that through this session of mine by the end of it i'm able to change or rather give you a different perspective towards gardens okay so let's uh, begin So today, as Shweta said, I'll be talking about uh, home nutrition gardens, and it's a step towards health and biodiversity. So the way I've structured this talk is uh, first I'll explain the link, and then we'll go into the practicality. So it's not going to be all gyan; it's going to be a lot of practical information that you can, all of you all, can use immediately after the session in your home balconies. and in the end i've planned some exciting uh, demonstrations for you all so please stay tuned till the end um because this is uh, the session is organized by biodiversity cell and i think uh, you have had induction sessions on biodiversity but i thought i'll still give you a short overview on biodiversity uh, because i'll be using this term very frequently in my talk so these are human faces right each of our face is different apart from identical twins and where does this difference come from it's our genes so the genetic diversity the the diversity in our dna in our rna is what we see in the in our uh, personalities then biodiversity in the food that we eat like uh, in kerala there were 200 varieties of mango that were recorded and what are the kind of varieties we eat today hapus devrai just you know those devgarjas four or five varieties bananas we'll maximum eat elaichi banana that too after all the nutritionists have been talking about it or the larger banana that we get but there's this whole diversity of bananas that are available rice more than 40000 varieties of rice are known and we consume just a few of them so that's the biodiversity of you know i think of india as well you know we have such a rich biodiversity and unfortunately we are gradually losing it now you'll ask me what's the link between biodiversity and the food that we eat every food everything that you eat or every, even the clothes that you wear everything comes from natural resources right and um say any food grain it has been harvested from a wild plant the genes so the relatives of these plants are in the wild today if a basmati variety goes extinct there is some pest attack and it it doesn't survive and we lose certain varieties the scientists will have to keep going back to the wild varieties and that is your biodiversity that's your original gene pool that we need to protect for our own survival and recently i think you must have even read this even more during the lockdown period that scientists world over are finding out the critical link between green spaces and our well being just today i was reading an article in denmark where the study is published and it said that there is a crucial link between urban life green spaces and mental health and just yesterday we celebrated the world mental health day and you know scientists have it's just everywhere this news you know that kids growing up in greener spaces like we who have who were born in the 80s i think we had a much greener childhood 
than the children of today and children in growing up in greener spaces are known to have higher iq as compared to those in lower green so you know this is the kind of importance of green spaces and uh, un has predicted that by 2050 60% of the world population is going to be urban so our green spaces are going to face much more pressure but are only green spaces enough and this is a garden that we all love right it's a lawn cover and then there are beautiful plants at the border and this is an ideal garden that we all want is this ideal and is this why the gardens were you know traditionally was this the function of the gardens not really even today if you go to the rural parts of india or anywhere in the world you know the rural parts if you see the backyard gardens they served a function the function was to have medicinal plants to have fruits to have biodiversity you know to have even the flowers you know they are not just ornamental if you've seen they are aboli they are mogras you know the the flowers that women use in their gajra or in the puja so every plant has a function unlike this image where it's only aesthetics so this is the kind of gardens that we should have like i remember i was once staying in a remote village in konkan and i happened to buy a papaya from the market and my host the the village guy he was so upset with me he said how could you buy a fruit and he was he just did not believe for them it's like you should just you should eat what you can grow you know for them the concept of buying from the market is not acceptable so that was a big learning lesson for me now uh, putting in perspective of what i just told you about bi biodiversity in garden health on your left is a banana plantation which uh, is very commonly seen in uh, the southern parts of india and it looks quite okay right it's green the plants look healthy they are tall but it's a monoculture so imagine if there's a pest attack if it attacks one plant and most of these plants are clones right they are uh, they are propagated from the same mother plant so it will quickly spread the disease similarly what's happening with covid 19 today we are such a densely packed species in in crunch spaces that the virus is just jumping from one individual to the other there's no natural barricades between us as against the image to your right is a permaculture concept where you can still see banana plants here but the gardener has intermixed it with other plants there are drumsticks there are so every plant has a different function drumstick will uh, you know it will uh, store atmospheric nitrogen in the soil and when there is a pest attack it gets confused from to jump from one banana to the other now it has to go through all these other plants and the image below is a garden in pune it's a terrace garden it looks a bit messy but i i really want to highlight that messy gardens can are okay and they actually support more biodiversity than our manicured lawns and this is something that i also had the opportunity to work while i was studying in leeds uh, university of leeds where uh, we were looking at lawns and these lawns are actually you know in the summer we are constantly spraying pesticides over them we are watering them why are we wasting our resources on these lawns okay and scientists european especially in the europe they started realizing that this is not how our spaces urban spaces should look like and on the right you can see that where now the councils over there are working towards having meadows you know they are changing the lawn cover into more pollinator friendly habitats and i'm trying to use the same concept in my uh, projects the two images below are of uran biodiversity park in vimannagar i think students from sambhaisis vimannagar must have visited this park where uh, there is a lawn cover done by the landscape architect but i'm now trying to add different fruit plants and different pollinator friendly plants to make it more biodiversity friendly and you know this is something that we all have learned in school the food chain and the food web if there is a grasshopper something else will eat it something else right and we are so scared of lizards most of us are scared of lizards but lizards are actually playing an important function of controlling your insects people keep complaining mere plant pe keeda lag gaya mere is pe are agar aapke is pe sahi tarike ke birds nahi hai to how will they eat up those insects you have to work towards building that food web in your balcony gardens 
and if you want like today's topic is about nutrition so if you want to have nutrition dense nutrient dense food you have to grow it organically right you can't have pesticides and to enable organic growing food you need biodiversity because this biodiversity is what will give you that strength to go organic okay and bees are declining the world over it's a serious problem and if bees are the major pollinators of our crops and very soon our supermarkets will look you know really barren without the honey bees so what is it that we can do this is a google earth image of the area i live in uh, it's it's slightly on the outskirts of pune and uh, this is how it looks like now completely concretized area with some farmland patches now flashback to 2002 and this is how the same region looked like it was a completely agricultural landscape with some forest patches on the hills and if the birds and the bees and the butterflies wanted to move around they had the entire landscape to themselves as against today which where i think most of you all wherever you all are in the part of the world this is what we face today it's concretization so imagine if a butterfly or a bee wants to fly from this green patch to say this green patch each of your home gardens your society gardens are going to act like bus stops because bee they also need space each of you can, has to become a green champion now by nurturing your plants in the right way just to give you an example a few days ago in one of my balconies i have got ornamental plants and there i just saw that a couple of butterflies kept coming and they were looking for nectar resources but they couldn't get and they went away so i felt really bad and i was like okay i need to change this balcony as well and i need to get nectar plants so you know we all have to change the way we work in our gardens and that's the vision with which ecosphere connect works it's my dream to transform our gardens you know create these are known as stepping stone habitats in science in scientific language so each of our home gardens can become a stepping stone habitat for biodiversity and for our health so let's now get into the practicalities of how to set up your home herbal biodiversity garden So for today's lecture, I'll be focusing more on herbs because there are a lot of uh, beginners here, and herbs are easier to grow. So uh, the thing with herbs is they're the first step to your nutrition garden. And even if you have like a really small space, you can grow about at least ten to fifteen types of medicinal plants, and they are also used in culinary. Uh, prop they have culinary uses. They give you self sufficiency. So for example, if you have a tulsi plant. you can make tea for at least even 6 to 7 people in your house but if you want to make a sabzi you'll need at least 15 to 20 tomato plants to you know to make it self sufficient for your family so try with herbs if you have small spaces and then you can go into vegetables now how do you plan your uh, balcony garden now this is uh, mahableshwar uh, it's a hill station close to pune some of you all must have visited it and that's the forest that we see right uh, you know this is the canopy view beautiful green view but if you walk into the forest you'll see different layers you'll see trees you'll see shrubs you'll see smaller plants you'll see creepers and that is what gives it's the essence of biodiversity you know you need to have all the layers because there are canopy insects there are ground insects the there are you know every layer of the forest supports different animals so you have to now mimic nature in your home gardens so there's this concept of seven beneficial layers wherein you have larger plants say you have a drumstick or papaya as your larger plant so we have to do layering then there are smaller fruit plants uh, so in this those lower and the shrub layer so this can be your tomatoes brinjals chilies in in your balcony gardens then we have the herbs uh, which i'll be talking about and there are also underground plants right all the radish the beetroot all the different uh, sweet potato so these are all the underground plants and the gourds tori ghee karela bitter gourd you know all of these are the climbers so you can have a vegetable garden or an edible garden using the concept of the forest 
and you can do layering in the same container as well because in small spaces we don't we are constrained so you have containers and say in this uh, i'll just read out this example like there's a drumstick here and there is tomato there are beetroot there's turmeric growing here basil which is a herb lettuce and then there is a climber so we can do the same kind of layering in our balcony gardens now option 1 for layering is you layer in the same pot like this is from my balcony where i'm trying to grow a uh, purple cabbage and chili plant and there is uh, this malabar spinach and this is a flowering plant so all in the same container here there's lemongrass and there's marigold in this pot uh, down here i've grown a papaya and there are these i've, I've sown peanuts groundnuts here and on the right bottom is a drumstick with a pan footi someone was talking about kidney stone this is the plant uh, pan footi so you can do layering in the same pots as well or second option is you have one plant per pot and you arrange them in layers so say we get a stand or uh, stands are really useful you know those three step stands i really recommend because you can accommodate a lot more pots and you arrange them like you put the taller plants behind on the wall you can put a trellis you get these trellis online nowadays just a nylon trellis you can fix it easy to fix and you can grow your gourds on that and now the question of planters so there's a whole range of planters available in the market you have terracotta you have ceramic plastic coir pots you know so you can go with whatever is easily available the key is the size one of the big mistakes that beginners do is they start small using a smaller pot the thing is in a smaller plot pot initially the plant will grow well but then it needs space to grow i recommend going for rectangular pots more because it gives the plants enough space for the roots to spread so you can have a 60 40 percentage 60 go for rectangular and 40 could be for herbs you can grow for these uh, single individual pots and uh, when you buy pots you know the height and the diameter is important so the height should minimum be for uh, it should be 6 inches and above and for your green leafies it could be 4 inches for tomatoes brinjal and all go for 8 inches so i'm talking about the height okay so make sure you have that range in mind don't go for smaller pots and upcycle you know you really don't need to buy plastic even paint cans are brilliant to grow food Uh, so you can just get paint cans paint it from outside and use it you can use pet bottles or you can even use the old yogurt cans just anything you find your you can lay your hands on second thing is sunlight you know after planters it's sunlight so sunlight is really important uh, to plan your edible spaces uh the direction so you have uh, the east facing balconies will receive sunlight in the morning the west and south facing balconies receive sunlight after uh, in the afternoons and the north facing ones is the most challenging so the north facing is the uh, balcony which will receive least sunlight just a little bit of sunlight in the peak summer days so the plants that i'll be talking about today can be grown in all the four balconies mm, for vegetables uh, you can uh, i would say east uh, west and south are good north is a bit challenging for vegetables but herbs can be grown in the north facing balcony as well so understand the sunlight in your balcony and then plan uh, your balcony uh, then wind breaks so uh, like you can see this image here uh, you have to protect your plants from direct wind they do not like direct wind even if you you ever walk in a forest you know there are these tall trees and most of the trees are smaller plants are growing under them in their shade so you have to create artificial wind breaks best way to do is layer like i have put my papaya and drumstick plant from on the side where the uh, the wind is coming and it also protects the plants from sunlight so that's something that you can do uh, now i'll talk about the herbal plants that you can grow i have chosen herbal because uh, they are again as i mentioned only they are easy to grow and maintain they have medicinal properties and when you buy herbs from the nursery select smaller plants like don't go for herbal plants which already have flowers because they have a short life cycle so select smaller plants 
and herbs can support biodiversity. So it links to what I had mentioned earlier. Now I'll take you on a journey of some plants that you can grow. Uh, Kadi Patta is one plant. It's technically a shrub, but it's also considered as a herb uh, because it has medicinal properties as well. Um, so Kadi Patta, did you know that the flowers attract butterflies? The fruits are amazing for birds and even we can eat them. And it is the host plant of the common Mormon butterfly. So by planting Kadi Patta, you are also providing a service to the biodiversity. Uh, so butterflies lay eggs on specific plants. So curry patta butterfly will only lay egg on a curry patta. So butterflies are known to be the best botanists. Okay, so uh, if you want to attract a certain kind of butterfly, you need to have its host plant. So these are the host plants. So curry patta, amazing. One care that we have to take while growing curry patta is when we harvest, we generally pull all the leaves and that uh, stem, stem is kept hanging on the plant. Now that stem is of no use to the plant and the plant has to unnecessarily keep feeding it with food. So I would suggest when you harvest Kadi Patta, please break it from the base like out here. You just break the entire leaf and then use it. So this is one tip to care for Kadi Patta. Next plant is multivitamin. Uh, they say that one leaf has different kinds of vitamins. And it's really easy to grow in pots and you can make a nice sabzi out of it. In uh, While doing a small space gardening, I would say you focus more on edible leaves because you can mix four or five different kinds of herbal plants and make a sufficient quantity uh, curry. So multivitamin is really good. It again comes in the shrub category. Adulsa. Adulsa, the leaves are used in kada. You know, we've all been having a lot of kadas lately. So you can just add a few leaves of adulsa, really good for cough and cold. And the flowers are a nectar source for butterflies. Again, all of these plants are low maintenance plants. Then hibiscus. So you get a variety of hibiscus in the nurseries, but the red and the white ones are the medicinal property. They have medicinal property. Sunbirds just love hibiscus, you know, so they will frequent your balcony to drink nectar. And uh, hibiscus tea, if you've never tried, it's amazing. Just Google hibiscus tea and during periods it helps in reducing the cramps. Um, so and uh, you can dry the flowers. So what I do is I just dry the flowers, make a powder out of it and you mix it with yogurt. The color of the, uh, the dahi also becomes pinkish. And you can use it as a hair mask or a body scrub. So a lot of benefits of hibiscus, both flowers and the leaves. The leaves are really good for, uh, you know, making your hair dark or, and conditioning your hair. So you can just use all parts of hibiscus. Basils, we all are in love with Tulsi. So do you know that there are, there's diversity of Tulsi also? So we have Krishna Tulsi, which is the darker color one, Ram Tulsi, uh, you have Vajanti Tulsi, you have Ran Tulas, which is a forest basil. Then you have the sweet basil, which is Sabza. You know, we put it in Falu Daza seeds and the leaves are used to put it in pastas. And you have Kapur Tulas. So Kapur Tulas, the, the leaves just, uh, you know, the aroma is amazing. It smells like uh, camphor. And when we take steam to reduce our cough and cold congestion, you just add a few leaves of camphor and you, it immediately clears up the congestion. So lots of basils that you can grow. One care, you know, people keep complaining about my Tulsi is not living, Tulsi Marti Rati hai. So the thing is, I just want to give you basic gyan here. It's a seed, seed will germinate, germinates a plant, plant flowers, flower will produce fruits and seeds. Now the whole purpose of the plant is to produce fruit and seed and die. Okay, that's the whole purpose of life, right? Produce your progeny and die. So the minute the flower, the plant produces seeds, it gets a signal, okay, my job is done. I can die peacefully now. Mere, my progeny, my genes have been passed on. So what you have to do is, if you want to increase the life of your basil plant, you have to confuse the plant. And how do you do that? You keep plucking off the flowering heads. So like this is the Tulsi plant. If I keep plucking off the flower heads, the plant will keep producing leaves because it wants to produce flowers and you're not allowing it to produce flowers. So that's one very simple way to maintain and increase the life of your basil plants. There are some plants for diabetes. 
this is on the left is insulin plant the leaf tastes exactly like if you've ever had imli ka patta it's that tangy flavor really nice tasting leaves easy to grow and on the right is stevia the leaves are you know it's extremely sweet you can add a few leaves to your chai instead of sugar so both are your beneficial for diabetes and you can add them to chutneys you can add make a tea out of it this is uh, pan phuti uh, the the leaf can be eaten raw as well uh, it's known as patthar jata or it reduce it doesn't uh, you know helps with kidney stone like you know doesn't allow kidney stone to form very easy to grow it's also known as miracle leaf like top right you can see just one leaf you keep it in your notebook okay it will start giving out roots and then you can just or even if you don't want to do that stage just take a leaf keep it uh, on soil and it will start giving new plants very easy to grow and it's the host plant of this cute little butterfly called red piero you can add a few leaves to your uh, theplas or the pancakes anything you know it adds a nice color and very healthy then panova we call it ajwain this is not the true ajwain okay it's not the ajwain that we have in our masala danis this is it's called as ajwain because it smells like ajwain but very good to reduce flatulence reduce bloating uh, you can have it in pakoda form pakoda jaise pyaaz ke pakode banate just dip it in besan and uh, deep fry or you can make you know uh, chutneys and uh, a lot of recipes okay just google and you'll find a lot of recipes it can be grown with stem cuttings so if you get a stem cutting somewhere just plant it and use it uh lemon grass i think a lot of us have started keeping lemon grass in our home gardens uh grasses again when they dry birds use it as a nesting material at the same time it's useful for our health you can use it for lemon both cool uh, iced teas as well as uh, other teas and um, while harvesting lemon grass you have to uh, trim it from the base of the leaves okay and you can make a bundle and store it in the fridge for at least 10 days uh, different kinds of mints can be grown so pudina peppermint japanese mint peppermint is an excellent mouth freshener like you have a nice indian meal and just pop in a few peppermint leaves and it's a beautiful mouth freshener Uh, you can grow uh, different kinds of mints using stem cuttings mandukparni now this is a beautiful plant which people call brahmi this is not brahmi this is centella asiatica it can be grown in pots and it's known to enhance memory and reduce stress now in today's time and most of us are facing so much stress you can make a drink out of it have it or uh, dry the leaves and use it as a hair mask it also increases hair growth and this whole range of uh, culinary herbs that can be grown uh, marwa chives oregano thyme galangal like uh, this is a galangal leaf if you can just see me and not the screen uh, you can just peel off the leaves like this and the stem you can see the stem right you can just cut it and add it to your tea your black tea so very nice fragrance and uh, very good for health and the roots rhizomes are like ginger used in thai cooking uh, sage again very good to reduce stress and malabar spinach so a lot of plants edible plants that can be grown in your balcony gardens these are just certain things that i do uh, these are some people have helped set up their balcony gardens i try to give them coir pots or terracotta pots which is uh, eco friendly and uh, this is what i do for a living you know i really want to transform people's uh, gardens of you know making them edible making them useful for us as well as the biodiversity around and in udan biodiversity park what we've done is uh, we've made a sensory trail so it is touch smell taste this medicinal plant so it's designed keeping in mind the blind as well and it's you know it's an you a park where you can engage with different kinds of plants while gifting you can actually think of medicinal plants now instead of some other gifts that you'll give just think of uh, medicinal plants and a recap of what we did and now is uh, today's gardens have to be functional understand the sunlight in your space create natural wind breaks place pots in layers and pick up larger size pots and remember that most herbs are annuals they will eventually die so please save seeds if possible
And uh, before we get into the demonstrations, I just want to say that let's together build an ecosystem in our home gardens to heal nature and in that process heal ourselves. So we'll begin with the demonstrations now. The first is about how to grow spring onion. Okay, and this is using aqua hydroponics. So it's really simple. What you need is, uh, you'll have to now see my screen. Okay, uh, Shilpa, can you all see me? Yes, we can see you. Okay, okay, great. So you'll need a glass of water, okay? And this is a regular strainer. It's the chai patti strainer. You keep it on this, the bottom of the strainer should be dipped in water. Okay. And this is an onion. Now this onion, you have to cut it longitudinally like this. And can you see this part where uh, the roots are coming out? Okay. So this is the side that you need. You will have to keep it upside down in the chai patti, in the tea strainer, like this. And just, this is it. Your setup is done. And you can now keep it uh, in an open space or in a windowsill. And within two weeks, the leaves will be ready. And the same onion will give you two harvests. So something like this, the roots, the white roots will start coming out. And then you will have leaves, the leaves can be harvested. So this is uh, an easy way to grow spring onions. Like I'll just show you uh, the spring onion that's ready in my house. Uh, can you all see this? Yeah. So we're just going to harvest it. You, all you need is a pair of scissors. And I'm just going to cut it. There. So if you are a, a family of four, then keep one onion for each person so you'll be able to cook enough and uh, the same onion will give me two harvests so this is the spring onion very easy you all can uh, do this immediately after the session uh, so that's the spring onion thing i wanted to show you all uh, second is uh, potting mix it's very important to have the right potting mix to grow edible plants you need one third part of soil one third part of homemade compost. If you don't get homemade compost, uh, get shenkhat, uh, which is cow dung manure from the nursery or vermi compost. You uh, need a uh, chai patti. So I'll be demonstrating how to make the mix, but I thought uh, this is just easier for you all to understand and then we'll go into uh, the practicalities. And cocoa peat and some coconut shells to cover the uh, pot. So this is the setup for a potting mix. Microgreens, okay. Microgreens are very, very easy to grow, extremely healthy, nutrient packed. So, I'm going to go the other way around. I'm going to first show you how to harvest microgreens and then we'll go into how to grow microgreens. So, just give me a second. Now, this is the microgreens that I have grown. It's a regular mushroom tray, okay. The, the mushroom packaging tray that we get. I have made holes below, filled it with the potting mix, and put mustard seeds. So once it reaches this stage, you know, microgreens are the first set of leaves that come. This is uh, two weeks old. And uh, again, to harvest it, don't uproot it because then it's very difficult to uh, remove the soil. So you are just going to cut the leaves, something like this. Okay. And uh, these leaves can be added to... Uh, Salads, can, you can make a chutney out of it. Very uh, nutrient packed leaves, organically grown at home with minimum setup. Uh, so I'll also be showing how to grow mustard microgreens. So this is again something that you all can do at home. Uh, I'll be showing you how to grow the green leafies. So methi, dhania, uh, rajgira, so all of these. So I'll be showing dhania today. And all these uh, rhizomes, you know, uh, arbi, colocasia, then ginger, adrak, turmeric, uh, the, the amba hala, the, the mango turmeric that we get in. So all of these can be easily grown using material that you get from the market. I'll also be showing you how to grow ginger today. And uh, that's it. So we will uh, 
start with the demonstration now i have uh, there is this something of prerna mobile if all of you all can uh, pin prerna mobile then you all can see me on that screen okay so i request everyone to So, Prashant, uh, you please help everyone. Oh, yes, I'm checking. Huh. So this screen will be open as it is, and she is going to log in from her phone. Ma'am, I think when she will on the video, uh, it will automatically come. Okay. Okay. Yes, Prerna Mobile. Can you see me? Yes, yes, I can see. Others also must be. Yes, ma'am, I can see. Okay, okay. There is option to pin, so everybody can do that. Okay, guys, let's begin. Yeah. Just give me a minute. I'll wear my hand glove. Just a second. I wanted to first show you all the different plants. Uh, this is the lemongrass. Okay. Now, as I said, while harvesting, you should harvest the base from the base. All right. This is a plant I couldn't show you all. This is uh, citronella, and it's a natural mosquito repellent. You can just uh, rub a rub a few leaves on your skin, and it will prevent uh, mosquito bites. This is the uh, mandu parni. I said it increases uh, memory. Okay, so this is tomato. See, tomato I'm growing in a regular, uh, just uh, discarded container. All right. Now I just wanted to demonstrate how to make a potting mix. If your soil is devoid of earthworms, this is how it will look. Can you see this thick lump? Yes. Yeah. So this is how the soil. This is the kind of soil you don't want. You want a really loose kind of a soil. Now, how do you do a soil test? Here, I have a soil from the nursery. This is homemade compost. Okay. This is some cocoa peat, and this is a sapling that I'll be planting. This is a chai sapling, and yeah, this is chai patti. So to do a test, what you have to do is add some water to the nursery soil. And the way we need uh, atta, the floor uh, that we need, so you have to just keep doing it that way. And can you see it's forming a lump? It's like a laddu-like lump. It's not crumbling in my hand. What now? Oh, what yes, you have to do is so this means that the uh, clay content is very high. and you need a loam kind of soil for gardening what we'll be doing is we'll be now mixing a lot of organic matter in it so i'm going to mix compost and coco peat and uh, if you don't have coco peat you can just add chai patti or even coffee uh, coffee powder so i'm going to mix it well and now see the consistency it's not forming a lump it's still forming so we'll add more you keep adding uh, organic matter till it's something like this okay okay so this is the kind of soil you need okay and to if you don't have coco peat what i do is i keep collecting brown leaves now uh, this is the right season to collect brown leaves so you can just can you hear the sound it's crumbling so that's yes. uh, ma'am that's how you need the dried leaves and you keep crumbling it and you are also doing a service now you are reusing the brown leaves which would otherwise go to the landfill so you crumble it well and you mix it with the soil okay now 
this is a coir pot. In coir pot, you don't have any holes below. I'll just remove this. You don't have any holes below. But I still add, I always save the coconut shells. These can be, uh, they're really good for potting. So you can just add them at the base and then add a few uh, dried leaves. Okay, now we'll be adding the soil in it. You have to fill the pot half with the potting mix. Okay, now this is the sapling. I've already removed it from the nursery bag. Can you all see the sapling? Now the base of this, yes, before planting, just loosen up the base a bit, slightly. Do not damage the roots, but just a bit so that the roots are now able to grow in the pot. Okay, now I'm gonna keep this on the pot and fill the rest with the potting mix. And chives is amazing. It's how you can grow, uh, you use spring onion. So you just cut the leaves and you can use it in noodles, in sabzis, and it will keep growing back. Uh, that's the beauty of this plant. You can get chive seeds online as well. Very easy to grow or requires, um, doesn't need full sunlight. Uh, so a partial sunlight, morning sun is something that it will do really well in. And just press the top after planting. And while watering, you have to just water gently. Just Done. And the potting is done. So remember, uh, while preparing your soil, whenever you get soil from the nursery, I do not believe in straining the soil and people then uh, even expose it to sun and itna kuch karte hai. Just have enough biodiversity, have earthworms in your soil and it will become a living soil. Okay, so this was one thing I wanted to show you all. Now the second is uh, how to grow dhania. Just give me a second, please. Okay. Now these are dhania seeds. This is akha dhania, which Coriander seeds. All right. To plant coriander, you have to break the seeds. And the same potting mix is going to be used everywhere. All right. So this is, I've taken and this is just a regular glass jar. And I'm going to, you have to break the seeds into two pieces. This uh, uh, encourages germination. And now I'm going to show you the concept of layering. Now we have the seeds ready and suppose I don't have a planter. You can use like this is a regular dates container. It's barely three inches, but I can use this for green leafies. Other option is the layering concept. So this is my plant. Uh, like this is the basil or tulsi plant and there is space below. I'm just going to put the seeds over here. In small spaces, you have to go for layering. You don't have an option. So you just uh, I put the seeds and uh, I'm going to cover it with the layer of soil and water it every day. Okay, so this is how you can even put methi. Methi, you just have to soak them overnight. So you can have methi seeds and any of the green leafies, you can grow it in this manner. And uh, the other thing is ginger. So to start, you know, you don't need any of the fancy planters. Like I use even the milk packets. So half a liter milk packets, one liter milk packet. Always, uh, so you wash it properly, sun dry the milk packets, cut it from the top and always make holes after filling the soil. So you want to make some holes at the top and the bottom. And this is a ginger plant. I, I, I start the plants in smaller bags. And now I want to transplant it because it's going to need more space. So this is a regular tea powder packet. It's a one kilo packet. I'm going to make it into a, a planter. So I've fixed, put potting mix here. 
and this is the ginger plant and we are just going to transplant it to the bigger plant that's it and ginger uh, haldi all of them they love brown leaves so you can keep adding brown leaves from top to this bag okay and now this packet is empty so i'll show you how to grow arbi or ginger so this is arbi arbi leaves are the leaves that we use for pakoras the aluchi um, vadi what we say so this is something you can directly plant it will give out leaves and this is ginger okay so ginger even if you make it into two pieces you'll get two different plants and the only way to plant it's very simple you just have to keep it on top of the soil and cover it with soil ginger doesn't like a lot of sunlight so keep it in a shaded spot and it will grow well and uh, the last thing is microgreens so this is mustard seeds from the kitchen you have to sow it dense this is regular potting mix okay now i'm just going to spread the seeds put at least one spoon of seeds in one container and uh, very lightly so you don't have to press the seeds down very lightly just cover it with soil and water it every day within uh, a couple of days it will sprout and then you can use it okay so these were the demonstrations i wanted to show you okay shilpa yes i think i'm open to questions now oh, okay yeah 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 <laughs> i was so engrossed <laughs> it was like uh, we can spend whole uh, evening till late night i i also wanted to show one more thing about seed saving can i do that before we start yeah with? yeah 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 this is a lemon basil plant okay so for herbs really you know you don't need a lot of space like these are small pots and i'm growing this is kidney stone plant and uh, this is the lemon basil plant i wanted to show so these seeds ye dikh raha hai aapko ye tulsi jaisa hi plant hota hai so once it turns brown like this you can save it and by saving it i can just remove the seeds the seeds are exactly like uh, sabza the black sabza seeds that we get that's how they look like so we just have to remove the seeds and put it in another pot then the seedlings will come so that's one way to deal with basils all the different basils i spoke about like just keep propagating it and keep saving the seeds okay okay fantastic <laughs> i i'm sure uh, everyone must be having lots of questions so yeah uh, shweta can you go through the chat box and uh, yes ma'am uh, thank you prerna ma'am it's really a very good session it's an eye open opener session for all thank, of us thank you so, so much shweta before going to a further chats uh, i have one question to you <laughs> uh i saw that you put uh, soil and seeds into red label packets so these are uh, basically plastics uh, so will it uh, affect the fertility of uh, soils too or not um that's a good question actually so the thing is that we are surrounded by plastics at the moment uh, and there's this whole thing about microplastics which sometimes can, even our shampoo bottles or even our shampoos you know they have microplastics which can leach out but these being edible plastic packets so i try to reuse as much as possible you know i feel that instead of buying plastic pots we could just reuse the material so in that case it wouldn't affect the fertility of the soil uh it okay. uh, generally doesn't if you have doubts see the best is our terracotta pots Okay. but the issue with terracotta is it, it becomes quite heavy especially you say if you mm -hmm. want to do it in a terrace garden then there's a issue of weight of transportation all that so practically if you see then this is better but environmentally if you see then terracotta and coir pots they are the better options mm -hmm. 
ओके थैंक यू मैम वी हैव फ्यू क्वेश्चंस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम डॉली शी इज आस्किंग दैट मैम कैन वी ग्रो दिस विद सम अदर प्लांट्स इन द सेम पॉट आई थिंक इट्स इट शी आस्क्ड इन द वीडियो सो या आई थिंक मे बी यू बी आस्क्ड सो second question is is it true that growing milk wheat plants do attract butterflies but at the same time it has negative effect as well can you please throw some lights on this yes that's a really good question actually so milk wheat does attract butterflies the the butterflies which uh, you know it's a host plant of i think it's plain tiger if i'm not wrong uh but the thing is that in in the americas where that one butterfly is found so they scientists have now realized that because every gardener is growing milkweed the butterfly species which should actually migrate all the way has stopped migrating because it is finding its resources in the gardens so we don't know and uh, also the thing is where you are situated so if you are living in a city which is already uh, really you know the landscape has been modified completely then i would say it's okay to grow milkweeds because you are surrounded by ornamentals you are surrounded by exotics everywhere so in urban gardens um growing biodiversity friendly exotics with some knowledge is okay but if you're uh, living in a rural landscape where there's a lot of forest area around i would say that don't go for milkweeds especially in india because the seeds can spread very fast and then they can go to our natural habitats so depending on where you stay where you live is very important to decide about milk weeds okay uh, ma'am we have next question from spandana shaji and uh, the question is ma'am we live in west up what vegetables grow best during winter season here especially tubers i think in i don't have much uh, and this knowledge about up but i think potatoes grow very well over there and uh, i think potatoes and all see all over india winters is the best time to grow vegetables so right from cauliflower cabbage all the green sabzis uh, that's very good and one simple rule i follow is जो आपके मार्केट में आज मिल रहा है सपोज इफ आई एम गेटिंग भिंडी इन माई मार्केट नाउ एट अ चीपर रेट विच मीन्स दैट इट हैज बीन सोन इन द गार्डन टू मंथ्स अगो सो यू फाइंड आउट बेस्ड ऑन वॉट्स अवेलेबल इन योर लोकल मार्केट एंड अकॉर्डिंगली डिसाइड वॉट कैन बी ग्रोन एंड ऑल्सो द वेजिटेबल वेंडर्स दे आर रियली गुड रिसोर्सेज टू टेल यू वॉट टू ग्रो बिकॉज दे आर फ्रॉम फार्मिंग बैकग्राउंड so identify these local resources to give you information okay so a uh, next question is uh, like i would like to know the best way of growing tulsi plant the question is by uh, sakshi vaish tulsi plant uh, best way okay so as i said uh, you have the right potting mix uh, the one that i showed today and uh, plant the sapling properly keep it uh, so tulsi will like at least 4 to 5 hours of sil- sunlight so that's something that you can't have it in a shaded spot and you know it doesn't like it like sunlight and uh, just to uh, show you that concept of uh, plucking like this is my tulsi plant okay and uh, i'm not sure the light is visible this is the flower hmm so i'm just going to pluck it off you have to keep plucking the flowers to allow it to grow and tulsi is a see the life of tulsi is one year two years not more than that but if you follow this concept like the tulsi at my home has been growing since 3 years it's about creating an ecosystem see other thing i want to mention is if you're beginning your garden gardening now like you're just going to get some plant it will take at least 6 months to a year for the ecosystem to establish so be patient with your plants like don't be disappointed with tulsi tulsi is very temperamental tulsi <laughs> has yeah it it decides for its own you know whatever you do but tulsi ko jagne to jaldi otherwise she will be like i no i am sorry i don't like it here <laughs> 
<laughs> so okay. save seeds. I think that's better. For Tulsi, just keep saving seeds. So uh, in case of Tulsi, uh, if uh, the uh, stem is means it's there and the leaves are dried, will it grow or it it won't grow? Ha, huh, that's another good question. So one way to a uh, very easy way is just scratch the stem. Mm -hmm. If the stem is green from inside, this is for any plant. If mm -hmm. the stem is green from inside, which means it's still alive and it will grow back. Okay. And tulsi ko bhi trimming lagti hai. So any plant, mm -hmm. you know, if you want it to grow, mm -hmm. uh, you have to uh, prune it mm -hmm. from the top. Okay. Uh, so, uh, ma'am, there is one question from Sheikh Rizwan uh, that, ma'am, does all plants need earthworms in their pots? If yes, where can we get it? Get them? Uh, not all plants. Uh, what you can do is see. The cycle is you should start composting at home. When you're composting at home, you will earthworms will come to your pots, and when you also get uh, gardening soil. You know, you get any nursery bag from the uh, nurse from the nursery, or any sapling. So the soil generally has earthworm eggs. They are unable to propagate because we keep spraying a lot of pesticides. Uh, so okay. uh, it's definitely good to have earthworms in your pots, but they will come. You don't have to manually add them. Use wormy compost. That's one way. So because when you uh, buy wormy compost, wormy compost will have earthworm eggs. So when you're adding wormy compost to the pots, the earthworms will come as well. So one way of doing it is, yeah, get get wormy compost. Okay. And one question is, uh, how can we get rid of mealy bugs that grow on the hibis hibiscus plant? Well, uh, mealy bugs. So first, you need to understand that mealy bugs are these white color insects. Okay, on the leaves, which we have all seen. Mealy bugs will only attack one is they will only attack those plants which has immunity. Come in. Insects attack only those plants with lower immunity. So one is you have to water it regularly. Second is mealy bugs and ants have a symbiotic association. Now most of you are from symbiosis, so it's symbiosis again an ecological term. Uh, what mealy bugs does it? It secretes a sugary liquid which ants love to drink. And in that process, whenever you go and want to catch hold of the hibiscus plant, the ants will attack you. So mealy bug is feeding the ants to protect itself. One best way to deal with mealy bugs is take a cotton swab, uh, dip it in uh, turmeric water, like normal, up like kitchen ka haldi powder. Take one spoon, add it to one liter water, dip the cotton in it, and wipe all the mealy bugs from the plant. And the same water, you know, just invest in a spray, a gardening spray. Because usse kya hota hai? Force se pani jata hai, and you use that spray, same turmeric water on the plants. Do it three times consecutively. Today, if I've done it, I'll do it tomorrow and day after. So what turmeric does is, you have to also take care of the ants. Till the time ants are there, mealy bugs will be there. So one way is just add turmeric water. Because I've tried neem oil, I've tried everything, but for me personally, turmeric has worked wonders. Okay. Yes, I also have tried same when I saw Prerna's uh, video few months back and it really worked for me also for uh, mealybugs, yes. Oh, great, great. Uh, so since there are a lot of questions coming, so I would request uh, participants to uh, unmute themselves and ask questions to Prerna ma'am. Can I? Uh, yes, you can go ahead. Uh, hi, ma'am. This is Shubankar from uh, Simbasa School of Culinary Arts. I wanted to know whether there is a specific time period after you save seeds that they keep their ability to germinate. Within a year, you should use them. See, the thing is about storing the seeds because if uh, you want to go organic all the way, then you won't be adding any chemicals, right, to the seeds. So that reduces the shelf life. Uh, one way to increase the shelf life is to store them in paper packets. And you have to basically control the moisture. The minute there's moisture, it's going to get fungus and the seeds will, won't be useful. But in any case, I would say a year is what you should use them. Like try to use them within a year. 
thank you ma'am most welcome uh, ma'am uh, one question i had so uh, you said that um, uh, manduk parni is also called brahmi so is it same or uh, are they are they different they are different so i said that okay most people call manduk parni as brahmi but manduk parni is not brahmi manduk parni scientific name is centella asiatica and brahmi scientific name is bakopa moneri so jo real brahmi hai that is bakopa moneri but both are native to india and both have similar properties like both are used for hair care both are used to enhance memory both grow as a ground cover on the soil both are found near wetlands i think that's why people get confused thank you ma'am uh, yeah i got it ma'am uh, i'm deepthi here from simbhasi school of culinary arts uh, so ma'am uh, i planted uh, these uh, tubular uh, uh, vegetables like uh, carrots and radish and all that in small containers and now they are small started growing small small so if i want to shift them uh, where do like how do i shift them without damaging them how small are your containers uh ma'am i actually uh, i uh, planted them in these uh, uh, containers like i guess a liter containers in which you store dal and all that mm-hmm. so people were throwing it away so i just picked them up and i started putting seeds in those so they seem to be pretty small and a lot of sapling they have Uh, but the tuber has started forming, is it? Uh, yes, ma'am. The tuber has started forming. So you will have to, like, you know, really dig in deep and uproot it with the tuber. Or if you can just uh, upturn the pot, and the entire plant can come out intact. And while transplanting, also, uh, like, the tuber is there. Suppose this is the carrot. You uh, have the original pot soil around that, and then transplant it. Okay. 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 Thank you. And over tubers, ground tubers, what you have to do is you have to keep making a heap of soil around them. Like, वो थोड़ा भी ऊपर आता है ना, like carrot or radish. You can see the white part above coming up. So you keep covering it with soil. Okay, ma'am. And there is canola, canola also that I planted and mustard. So mustard, I can keep it in them, or should I change the pot? Mustard and Uh, ma'am, in one pot there's mustard and in the other pot there's canola, canola. Okay, so with mustard, how if see if the plant is big enough or like it's got like really big leaves, then you can transplant it. But generally, uh, green leafies don't like transplantation. Mm. So, uh, very delicately you'll have to transplant it. Okay, ma'am. And the canola, canola, I can keep it or I should that? Uh, I actually, I'm sorry, I don't have much experience with this. Particular plant. Okay. But, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Ma'am, how can I get rid of aphids? Last year, they destroyed most of my plants. Which aphids are they? The yellow ones, the or what's the color? Ma'am, white. White aphids. you try turmeric water and on which plant are they ma'am marigold on marigold okay so you can uh, one is turmeric water or the second thing is neem oil so you can have you tried neem oil not yet ma'am just buy an organic neem oil and make a dilution of it and spray that on the plants and okay. while while spraying these you know on potted plants with your hand you have to keep removing the insects that really works you know when you're spraying just keep uh, moving your fingers on the leaves and the flowers mm. so the insects will fall down and jab bhi aap jo bhi spray karte ho put it on the soil as well like if turmeric water you're going to spray it on the plant the insects will fall on the soil but you're not doing anything to the soil then the insects will climb back on the plant so i always put haldi on the soil as well mm. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, most welcome. Okay. Oh, uh, any more questions? So, hello, ma'am. Yeah. Oh. Hello, ma'am. Santosh here. Hi, Santosh. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. It was. a uh, really great session actually I, i'm from rural area so this is quite uh, i mean we do farming of all these 
like onions and uh, ginger and all this. So it was quite related to that. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, my question is uh, that you showed that rantulas. We do have a lot of rantulas here, so we uh, take that plant as unnecessary uh, pla plants, right? Grass. Mm. Is. So, is there any use of that rantulas? Rantulas is highly medicinal. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, you have where to we can use it? Uh, in in your teas and uh, tulsi ki chutney bana sakte hai. You can use it in parathas. So the okay. leaves are useful. So the way we use our regular tulas, same way you can use ran tulas. And ran okay. tulas grows quite tall. Yeah, yeah. And you can make some saplings and give it to us. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. We have a lot of, I mean, uh, all these uh, beehives you told, the nest we have, I mean, complete biodiversity here. So that's Which, which uh, part quite... are you from? Where's, where's your I'm name? from Latur, Maharashtra. Oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so nowadays it's completely raining here and uh, complete greenery here all around. So you should send some pictures of the ginger and whatever you all are growing, you know. It's... Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And send. And complete mm -hmm. biodiversity also uh, here. Yeah. Uh, we get rabbits and uh, snakes and uh, I mean. S Santosh, are you following a biodiversity page, uh, Instagram page? No, ma'am. No, uh, if not, uh, you please follow. If you are not in on Instagram, Please come on Instagram, open. Yeah, I'm, I'm on Instagram. I, uh, I will look at then it. please That's follow all. biodiversity cell underscore symbiosis and you yes, can tag us huh? and we yes, will uh, share whatever images uh, of biodiversity you want to show us around. Okay. Sure, sure ma'am. Also sure. Santosh, uh, Prerna ma'am has also one page of Ecosphere Connect. So you can also okay, follow. Sure, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> Yeah, and follow both. Okay. So, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prerna, uh, yeah. The plants which you have told us today, I have written down all of them. Uh, so all these plants uh, uh, means we can grow and we can get it from nursery. Are they uh, means uh, it's okay to buy it from nursery or we should uh, get it from some good place uh, where these organic because I don't know sometimes uh, trust these uh, nurseries also roadside nurseries nowadays there are lots of roadside these nurseries yes yes so, so for uh, if you see if you have access to an organic nursery nothing like it like now I've started like a home nursery I propagate the plants many of the plants at home because I've got so many seeds and I'm propagating them Okay. If you can get cuttings from your friends' uh, uh -huh. gardens, that's another mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. uh, for say plants like uh, kadi patta, you can still mm -hmm. get it from a nursery. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, kadi patta I have, but uh, insulin plant, multivitamin, manduk parni, oregano sage, all this. Uh, oregano sage, you can buy seeds uh -huh. uh, and uh, multivitamin cutting. So. Okay. Uh, most of these are from cuttings. Try to and come I think multivitamin, you won't get it. Yeah, I'll give you. I was just going to say, I can give you a cutting. <laughs> okay. okay. But yeah, because um, some of these uh, are actually if you stay close by. Sorry? Oh, Ma'am, if you stay uh, close by Magarpatta, anywhere, the Magarpatta nursery bring a lot of organic. Uh, stuff like even the insulin plant and all these herbs and all are there on a very huge range which even I was surprised uh, finding them here because even we want I wanted to develop my own garden in one of my plots and start the organic thing. So I found that many seeds and many stuff is many uh, uh, things are there in that nursery. Even the steps that man was talking about the uh, where, where you can grow plants in a vertical form, the step formation even that you have in a very okay, okay, yeah. Because Magarpata side, there are lots of nurseries, uh, like like, but mm -hmm. that's what like Shilpa and I were talking about um, organic, you know, most of them are not organic nurseries, so it's always good. Also, if you go to rural parts, you know, uh, if uh, you can get some plants from your own villages, mm -hmm. uh, that's I think they are the best sources. Mm. Uh, just try to even arbi ka patta, you know, if you get a plant from a village where they are growing, like Santosh, I think we have to catch hold of him now mm. to get plants. But any, any village, any part, try to get plants from there and then grow because they are really healthy. Mm -hmm. 
and prerna uh, usually uh, in my pots uh, if uh, grass grows uh, i keep it like that only so is hmm. it okay yeah yeah so uh-huh. uh, because grass. from childhood always we have been told that uh, agar hamare pot mein baju grass aa gaya to usko nikal ke you know keep it clean yes, uh, yes. so nowadays i i don't pluck uh, grass i just let it grow to kitna rakh sakte hai ya kitna hum control kar karenge karenge aur you know it's um, good to... see grass agar aap uh, sabzi uga rahe ho us pot mein mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. then i would say that you remove the grass because see, okay. ultimately the grass is going to take over because they okay. are aggressive growers uh-huh. what i do is i have kept a few pots for grasses because uh-huh. i know that munias visit my balcony yes, yes, like to take yes. it for nesting material yeah other thing that grass is an excellent mulch so that's something i couldn't cover like if i'll just uh, take a second to show you like imagine these brown leaves uh-huh. are mulch mm-hmm. okay it's grass so you just have to cover your soil with it mm-hmm. so you just have mulching so instead of brown leaves you can use grass just yeah. dry the grass and then use it as mulch mm-hmm. it will uh, protect the moisture of the soil yeah and if you're doing composting you can just keep adding the uh, grass yes. to compost yes yes yeah okay i think yes uh, i uh, mm, so mukh we can go to uh, now uh, at the end of our session uh, people uh, students are asking uh, even contact number also of prerna uh, so i yeah, think yeah. Uh, prerna they are asking your contact number also so you can follow her on an instagram page uh, sh- uh, have you given your email id or something like that prerna yeah so my uh, insta is ecosphere underscore connect Mm-hmm. and uh, my email is ecosphere connect at gmail dot com mm-hmm. simple and uh, any questions I'll be happy to answer them you can mm-hmm. just drop a message on insta or or email me yeah okay yeah thank you thank you very much Prerna thank so, you so much thank you so much <laughs> thank you Shweta and all the other organizers yeah. ma'am uh, can I take up the vote of thanks part yes Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I I really extend a hearty vote of thanks to Miss Prerna Agarwal for such a wonderful session uh, on home gardening. I also thank Shilpa Ma'am for giving us opportunity to organize this session and our audience for joining the session on Sunday evening. Mm-hmm. So uh, we got to know uh, very new concepts from you, Ma'am, like how to utilize even small spaces in our home for gardening. and uh, how to protect and nurture plants apart from this the uh, we got to know uh, much uh, medicinal properties of herbs and all those things and uh, your demonstration were really uh, good so we can uh, definitely practice those in our homes also yeah thank you so much somok and um, one thing you know as a parting word i would say that we constantly keep waiting for perfection and in that process we lose our creativity Yeah. So don't wait to get the perfect plant or the perfect soil, the perfect plant. Please begin, and nature will take care of everything else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 